Welcome back to another episode of the Hours from Midnight podcast. We got two amazing ladies in the building. Actually, three. Three. We got three amazing Whoa. ladies in the building. <laughs> right, we got Bab, we got Harpo, and we got Jasmine. Brown girl guilt. Hey, <laughs> shout out. Hey, yo, shout out, shout out. Check out. And Ick, his wife. Woo! <laughs> Actually, he's now known as Bab's husband. Yeah. yeah. He had that happen like three to five times during the festival and he yeah. came over, he ran over and he told me, he's like, no somebody way. just came up and he was like, are you Bab's husband? Yeah. And I was like, well, honey, how did it make you feel? He was like, it was pretty cool. Like, he was a good yeah. vibe at the festival. He, he was, was. Yeah. He was like out and above, smiling, laughing. Dude, so we were all saying bye, right? Because we're all going home. And like, so we were standing there, he like hugs us all. Yeah. And there's four people that aren't like with like with us. He goes and hugs them too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, what? <laughs> and just like, yeah, and then he was like, oh, I thought they were part of your crew. We're like, yeah. nope, but then he's like, anyways, bye. He could have been burglars for all he knows. He would have yeah. still said bye and hugged yeah. them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet, though. He has, like, this year is like that. Yeah. Absolutely, he does. He is his father's son. Okay, but well, we should talk about you guys. First things first, right? Where the t-shirts at, yo. I know, yeah, I left okay, them at home. Okay, I literally okay. talked about I mean, it. They said like, they left it at home. They didn't have it for us. No, I literally no. called. I said, like what you size do you think I should take? Two larges, one medium, you know, just, like, mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot it at home. Hello. Shout out 5X Festival, man. Honestly, you guys looked yeah. us up. We went there. It was like the best networking I've done in a minute. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Dankmore. Yeah, there's like a lot of cool people there that I met just vibing. Yeah. What was yeah. your favorite part? My favorite part of 5X was probably... Honestly, it was meeting the Audio Mac people. He was from Detroit. Yeah. And then he went to Miami. He went to New York after it. Yeah. He came on our podcast the next day. Yeah. Oh, no way. Right. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gosh, yeah, yeah. 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 Gosh, so That's dope. Yeah. He was like explaining like how he has to kind of like show his people back home in New York that Punjabi music's a yeah. thing to care about. Yeah, yeah. I just going through all that with him. I felt like we connected so much, man. Yeah, like, he's, he's a cool, really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 they were all dope. One of them came from Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of them was local, uh, and then Agash came out from New York. Yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. The Amsterdam yeah. guy was wild too. Felix. 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 Yeah, yeah, Felix. Yeah. Felix. Yeah. Yeah. He was really nice. Like, oh, yeah, this is also like the like extra added part about Five X is like when you come, like you end up making so many connections, so, many. so yeah. much yeah. like scope for collaboration that you yeah. don't even know about, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, we yeah, couldn't yeah. have planned for Akash to come on this podcast, mm. but it just kind of sort of happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down to earth. and then we we fed him a shahi paneer and naan after. No way! Yeah. Yeah. And oh no way! No wonder he like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took him there on the house. That was yeah on the house. You know, yeah. Shout out Lighthouse for that. Yeah, butter chicken poutine. I don't know if you know any. No. Yeah. 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 Like if I'm in Abbotsford, you know it's for a purpose or a reason, uh-huh. and I don't remember last time I've always been Abbotsford. Not really, Abbotsford. you're missing yeah. out. No, yeah, that's true, like yeah. me, because like I work out here now too. I'm here like every day, right? Yeah. yeah. So people sometimes think, right? They're like, "What's the need for this city to exist?" Aww. Like they, they almost think like, "Yo, <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, I wouldn't say it like that." They're like, 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 "Yo, like, that's, that's, so that's pretty next level." So, so irrelevant. The hundred thousand yeah. people that live in Abbotsford. Like, you know, okay, it, if man. you actually look at it, Abbotsford landwise is bigger than Surrey, but Surrey just has a bigger population. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're actually getting so much more development there now too. Like the, yeah. the IKEA, for example, y'all don't have an IKEA. In no, if no. it wasn't in that direction and it was the opposite direction, I would totally go more yeah. often. But it's no. like I have, I personally have yeah. no reason. To yeah, there's, yeah, there's no reason, right? But, but you know what? You guys can hate all you want. We got Mocha out there. Yeah. Well, I spend. Yeah. I, I do spend a lot of time at Abbotsford. Yeah. I mean, actually, <laughs> your hairstylist. My hairstylist is yeah. there. I've dated like a couple guys out there. Okay. I, yeah. okay. I'm like a. Abbotsford the one day. Abbotsford downtown. Can we get a rating? Can we get a rating? Certified Abbotsford. Can we get a rating? I don't want to do that. Yes, you That's so mean. Give us a. <laughs> oh no! Yo, you, you guys are from Abbotsford. I'm, I'm born in Surrey. I'm born in Surrey. No, 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 they were they were really nice. They were really really nice. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think that build Abbotsford this people off. are build build this off, right? But I think okay. Abbotsford people are different than Surrey people. Holy sure. man! Give, give yeah. away, like, give me an example. I don't know. I feel like yeah. um, oh, maybe are, because like I don't know. Like I think I found that people in Abbotsford tend to like stick together a lot. Like with like clicky. Who, they're not clicky, but like. In Surrey, Vancouver, you're like around more diverse like thinking yeah, and like opinions, thinking, yeah. and so like mm-hmm. sometimes I think like Sochuni is like a little bit more Hello, open, yeah. right? Yeah, I do agree with that. But all like, the bunda you dated are gonna watch this right now. No, it's okay. It's <laughs> not about just okay. them. It's not about just them. They were really nice. They were bo- like both really, really nice guys. Mm-hmm. No, they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were. But um, yeah, I, I I think like but Abbotsford's downtown like cafe scene is like not like Surrey can't compete with. 
at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so awesome. And like, yeah. there's like such a cute little quaint culture there that I really love. Yeah, but yeah, Central Street kind of shits on it now in the sense of like, okay, that square where 5X was, right? Yeah. But the Abbas Street, there'd be like druggies there and shit. Like, we don't really have like a square. Surrey type has of that thing. too. Though. I mean, Surrey has it too. They're just now developing, you know, more of a community there to kind of clean out that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Which is like shitty because it's gentrification because where are people without homes supposed to go? Exactly. Like, yeah. It makes no yeah. sense, right? Like you're just keep urbanizing all these areas without any like proper you're standard You're not way. solving the problem, you're just, yeah. you're like putting it to the side. Yeah, yeah. and like I- Washing it under the rug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. like, call, like I mean, we're so stigmatizing to them, right? Like we call them druggies, we call them this, we call them that. Yeah. But it's like, they're oh, just yeah, like- that's true. I They're just like a that. vulnerable population, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, back to 5X though. Uh, one thing I really, really liked about 5X, I'm not gonna lie, right, was just left alone, like shut that shit down at the end. Yeah. I swear, yeah. this guy literally came yeah. out yeah. so much energy, yeah. so much passion, yeah. so much yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was like, such a wow. Such a yeah. wow. Yeah. But not only that too, I think I was talking about off the pod, but I'll bring it up on the pod too. But you were like doing great. All right, I want you to know you were doing good. <laughs> Same with you, Harpo. You were very hospitable. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You, you. you girls were stressed. I, I could sense yeah. it. Yeah. I tried yeah. to help, but I know there's not much I can do because I actually had no idea what the fuck. He was no. saying though he like hugged you at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like I was, I was going back and forth between backstage and VIP. Yeah. Stop me, and you were like, Bav, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm working. <laughs> I'm running a festival. Mm-hmm. And it was really sweet. You yeah. offered to support, and you said, is there anything we could do? Yeah. And obviously in that moment, no. But even yeah. just the gesture was really nice. Yeah. It, it, it brought the home environment, you know? Yeah. Like 5X is really yeah. like a, we always say 5X is like your cousin's wedding. Yeah. You <laughs> see like similar people, like yeah. smaller yeah. events, bigger events, right? The block yeah. party is like the reception, really. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. there, it's so exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that moment just allowed me to be present for a second and really just like have gratitude for the people that are even just invited as VIPs to come through and yeah. to just yeah. kind of open up their hearts and be like, do you need support? And I'm like, no, but thank you. Yeah. And then I kept yeah. running. It was me and Abhishek, right? So me and Abhishek yeah. stopped her. We like we were like, come here. Right? We all had like a group hug <laughs> <Yeah>. moment. <laughs> okay. And we were like, it's okay, Bab. It's yeah. okay. You know, next year, we should be VIP and volunteers. Oh, that'd be fun. That's sweet. That would be sweet. Well, yeah. I think like like what you're saying just points to the fact that it's just a bunch of like up and brown kids running this thing. Yeah. Like, we're just yeah. a bunch of nanny running this thing. Mm-hmm. And like, why are we doing it? Because we want to just create like a really creative, wonderful, loving environment mm-hmm. for our community members, right? Of course. Yeah. And it is just like a bunch of kids like me and Bav running around trying to yeah. put okay, this so, together. So touching on that, how did it all start? Because I know we, I think we were talking about it off the pod. It's mm-hmm. been almost 20 years, right? Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So four yeah. fathers and four mothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. the organization is actually VIBC, Vancouver International Bhangra Celebration. So long time ago, 20 years ago, there were a bunch of brown kids in their 20s who were like, we want to see our culture represented in our community. And so they started to do a Bhangra competition in downtown Vancouver at Queen Elizabeth Theatre. And they would also like have like some events in Robson Square and then outside the Vancouver Art Gallery. And they did that until about 2016. It was like like a really like elevated Bhangra culture. And then in 2016, they were like, okay, like not everybody relates to Bhangra. Like not everybody vibes with, yeah. with Bhangra. And so they were like, we need something else. So they came up with 5X, um, and they also, like, before that, brought the organization from downtown Vancouver to Surrey, Mm -hmm. and um, because they knew, like, Surrey is where the culture is. And so, yeah, 5X started in 2018, but the organization's been around for 20 years, and we're celebrating 20 years this year. This was our seventh 5X festival. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, obviously the pandemic, like, kind of canned some stuff in between there, but, yeah, like, it's... It's such a wonderful little project that yeah, uh, no. we can't take credit for for no. starting, but um, like at in this chapter, like we're the leaders of it. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's yeah. such a cool thing that you guys like have together. Even for me, it was such a such a fun experience. I, like I loved it. Like everything about it. I can't even say there was like one thing that was my favorite. Jasmine's everything. Like jumping man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. see Jasmine She's VIP. A stab. Oh, yeah. Jasmine's what I like to call like a like how do I put it? You know those people that you can just insert into any situation and it just works. Yeah. Like, not yeah. to hype you up too much, don't guys. So, like, a Gemini? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, she, like, um, so Jasmine, obviously, being the manager and also being a really good friend of ours and just helping us out with the podcast and also just being her own person, would go out, of, like, I was like, Jasmine, like, that person looks cool. Jasmine's like, say no more. Runs <laughs> over and just like, hi, my name's Jasmine. I'm yeah. going into the yeah. podcast. As you should, yeah. though. That, yeah. That's really the point of it all yeah. is yeah. the arts, the culture, the music, like, to bring people together yeah. for the love of really the South Asian community yeah. in mm-hmm. itself. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, like, growing up, 
Um, I did a lot of sports with non-brown people. So like going to VIBC was like a place where I was like, whoa, I can connect with my yeah. community. Yeah. To now fast forward to have something like 5X, it's like, we wish we had it when we were in high mm. school. And to now to be able to provide that to like the youth is, yeah. is, is another level, it's another chapter. Yeah. yeah. I know obviously you guys always ask, would ask us like, what did you like about 5X, right? What do you guys like about 5X? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite part of life? I don't remember <laughs> anything <laughs> from it. Oh, uh, that's not good. <laughs> This year in particular, um, or I think it was today we had a meeting and, and we shared something similar. For me, it was um, how many more people were brought together. We did a, um, a private industry mixer, mm -hmm. uh, which had a lot of artists and executives and management and VIP, just people that work in the South Asian music industry. Yeah. We were really fortunate enough to have people from like the cars community. So like Juno's, nice. um, we worked with Warner Music Canada this year, 91 North Records. So yeah. people, key players in the Canadian music industry that are now key players in the South Asian music industry. Yeah. So yeah. to have those people in the same room as a bunch of kids that grew up in Surrey and now make music in Surrey yeah. was really heartwarming and full circle yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was long overdue. And so like truthfully, we, we were like, gonna show up like is this actually gonna be successful and to have an up-and-coming artist talk to somebody who's been in the music industry for like 25 plus years yeah. who doesn't necessarily listen to Punjabi music yeah. but they're just talking and they're just getting along like it was it was exactly why we do what we do yeah 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 I would agree I would say like that was my favorite part too is because it's actually beyond just like what it means for our organization to have people like that that are like power holders and like money holders come to Surrey and be yeah. like, yeah. look at these brown kids, let's invest in them, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's um, so hard, right, to convince yeah. people to do that in the first it place. It is, right? We're still a minority. Like, I think I saw a statistic, though. we're still, like, only 10% of the total Canadian population or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, it feel like it. It doesn't right? feel like no. it when we're here, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, because we're so, we're so popular in highly dense areas, like, obviously, Surrey, Abbotsford, Toronto, GTA, whatever, right? Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's, I was talking to even uh, Akash about it, like, uh, music Mac, Audio Mac, sorry. Music Mac, Music Mac. Yeah. They're butchered so many times that too. I did. Like, I don't I know what it is. It's like Audio Technica. I said Audio Technica. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. These are just brand names yeah. you can write down. I, I know. Yeah. With audio. Anyways, with Audio Mac, like I was talking about it, and he's just like, it's hard to like initially convince someone, like, like or like mm. someone that's like kind of like a corporate like person yeah. at the top line, like, oh, that South Asian music is coming up in such a way. But then once they see it, they understand it. Right, because yeah. like our community really does put on, especially in the Canadian Punjabi scene. Like when we, I feel like especially like in Surrey now, yeah. like the, our this area, hub. it's like it's going off. Yeah, like it's like, popping off because well, I feel like there's money, right? Yeah, like, like yeah. To see that there's like like Diljit the song sold out BC Play yeah. Stadium, like sold out, sold like, out. Yeah. Yeah. that is money. That's yeah. there's yeah. money, there's yeah. power in yeah. it as well. Yeah. Bro, right? Drake doesn't even do BC. Speaking of Diljit, he went on the Jimmy Fallon show. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, like big things for us. Yeah. It's yeah, like representing yeah. on a global scale, right? Because even though like a lot of people I've talked to in the community, like oh, but oh, you got that, right? It's not right? It's like yeah. no, no, like that's like the complete wrong. Like I don't want to say complete wrong mentality. So who, who would say my mentality is right or wrong? But um, I love it because it's like it's representation for everybody. Because like it's like paving the pathway for other people to come afterwards and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like Diljit's walking so we can run. For yeah, that aspect yeah. in the entertainment industry, right? And I mean, he's got twenty years on him. Yeah, exactly. Right? He's been doing it for a long, long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. 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 And that's why organizations like 5X and events like 5X Fest are so important and why yeah. community members should come out. So I'm just going to like not be biased for a second, but like we have artists who have never even played coffee shops and then they start yeah. to play arenas. Yeah. And like in this industry, the more practice you have on a stage where yeah. you have stage managers and yeah. like a bunch of tech people backstage, the better and better you get and the exactly. more refined your performances are. <laughs> When you go from like playing nothing to playing in these arenas, your career is not going to be that long, right? Like yeah. our, yeah. some of our favorite artists, we want them to be here for like 40, 50 years, but they're only going to be here for like 10 maybe if they're yeah. not, yeah. if they're not getting they that adapt, practice, right? right? Your artistry needs to develop, right? And your, your ability to also work and, and connect to your community is very, very important. And mm. so in this fast paced lifestyle, it's almost like that kind of that that chapter is missing sometimes a lot of artists. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of artists, base. yeah. They probably prefer like the more mysterious route. Yeah. But I think in the long term, the guy who wins more is a guy like Tanina Tar, who's like always yeah. posting stories, connecting with people, or being like viral or whatever. Yeah. But people feel like if you say his name, like you know yeah. them. Yeah. Some artists, like you say their name, I'll be like, yo, his songs are sick, but I don't know what he yeah. is. Yeah, right? because there's no resonance. There's no way for you to connect, yeah. like yeah. from like art, like human to artist. What is it that makes you connect? Yes, their their music, but also their story, right? Yeah. Like, like got an Angela on? winning a Juno to me made me cry because I'm like this dude lost his parents when he was like a teenager right yeah. now imagine i didn't know that about him i'd be like oh cool another brown person got juno mm-hmm. right yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's important to have the storytelling and yeah. the ability for us to provide platforms for emerging artists i mean like it's amazing to see where johnny and moga are now but once upon a time they were not given a stage they were so no. 5x was that yeah. stage and we were yeah. so happy to program them because the community loved them yeah. and to now yeah. see them go global and like yeah, yeah, travel yeah, the yeah, world yeah. and do shows it's, it's yeah. really really humbling and amazing to see yeah that's yeah. one of the strongest case studies for 5x <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like straight up like yeah. you should put that in our, like daily like every year impact report because like nobody wanted to program them yeah. like nobody understood and then i think like there was like a general perception of like the kind of art that they were doing yeah. and mm-hmm. so our past executive director he was like no these guys have something they're dope and i'm gonna program them and he did <clears> like every year we programmed yeah. them yeah and then they started to play other shows and that's not to say like it's because of us but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. because yeah. we were like we see something in you we know you're gonna go somewhere yeah. we're gonna yeah. give you the platform yeah, yeah. And, and this has happened before in 2018 we had divine come down yeah and that was right before gully boy and people didn't know who he was was back then people yeah. were booing yeah. him like people yeah. were like really? who the hell is this person rapping in hindi on stage oh, yeah. and then yeah. gully gang came out and then like us a convict had to go on the mic and be like shut the fuck up y'all have no idea who he is so you better listen and then he started to like sing <laughs> yeah. and rap and then gully gang came out and everybody was like wow that was his first north american show and now know? those same people are listening to his new album with gutter with gutter yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's full circle do you guys well, know what the 5x stands for oh, actually? that's a good question you're gonna love this. So because our organization has its roots in Bangla, mm. Bangla comes from Punjab. Mm. The five and five oh, X yeah. is the Punjab in Punjab, mm. and the X is to multiply. So that's yeah, 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 that's like that's a really that's like I feel like a lot of people make names and they don't actually have like a meaning behind it. Yeah. Yeah. But that meaning is like dope. It's yeah. sick. It's, yeah. It is yeah. pretty yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean we can't take credit for it, but it's like no. you know whoever came up with it was like a genius. But now she yeah. tells everybody she's five on the X. <laughs> yeah, I'm the five. She's the X oh, in this wow. moment in time. I mean you guys do make like a really good team. Like this year it was it was yeah like it was a blast. Our job is to connect the community here, and when we yeah. see people doing good work, we want to make sure that they're in our space. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and each year it just gets bigger and better with mm-hmm. influencers and creators and mm-hmm. artists and whoever. Like I get asked all the time now that I'm in Toronto, when is Five X coming to Toronto? And when is it coming to Toronto? That's, that's an answer I don't have yet, but <laughs> soon. If you're listening and you want to sponsor, you can email me. But um, <laughs> very soon. I mean, yeah. Toronto has a beautiful beautiful art and music scene but yeah. what what we have at 5x is incomparable mm. incomparable yeah. to so re yeah <laughs> represent yeah <laughs> really really you know i grew up in surrey but to come back is a privilege yeah and to be here is yeah. is something that i cannot explain the more i started traveling the more i started really getting out there and then coming back like home is home I love- Arbo, I want to ask you something directed towards you about yes. your podcast. Yeah. All right. So obviously, for those that don't know, Harpo has a podcast. All right. Go check it out. We'll link it in the description. But Brown Girl Guilt. Brown Girl Guilt. Jasmine Knows. Jasmine yeah. Knows. I was going to get to that. She beat me to it. Shout out. Um, what made you actually want to start a podcast? Because we get this question a lot. Yeah. Like Even off the pod, you asked us as well, right? But like, what really made you want to start a podcast? And how do you tie that into like what you are inevitably wanting to do like for 5X or whatever? Is there any connection there? Is that kind of just a personal thing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think what made me want to start is I I just felt like there was like stuff inside of me that I wanted to just share and get out. Mm-hmm. And I've always been a writer, so I've had a blog since I was like a teenager. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I've had a, vlog, a blog. A blog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always wanted <laughs> Yeah, I've had one for a long time and it's just like changed over time, like mm-hmm. the medium has changed. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think when I first came up with the concept Brown Girl Guild, somebody encouraged me to like make a podcast. Yeah. And at the time, like podcast was like quite popular in our community. And um, she's smiling at me because <laughs> if we're gonna get spiritual, my throat <laughs> chakra is like my power center. So like using this is like yeah. really good and aligned for me. Mm. And so I was like, okay, like on a microphone, like talking, I like all that. And then I just started and then 
Um, yeah, I feel like I don't like the act of like getting into my closet and like turning the mic on and recording. I don't like any of that. I hate that, but I actually really like like conversations and projecting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, uh, the, the reason I kept doing it is because like, I mean, if you listen to my episodes, like they're so different and real, Mm. like they're like so vulnerable. I have no shot when I record my episodes. I I listen to the one about liking your dad. You go, it's like, you know, stop dating your dad. Stop dating your dad. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. And like, they're so real because I'm like, I'm so not a fan of brushing things under the rug in our community. I'm like, you know, you're going through it. I'm going through it. That means like 10 other people are. Mm -hmm. So let's stop faking. And so when I started to do the episodes and like, I realized girls were like, oh my God, like this that I was like okay I'm just gonna keep doing it and it does relate to 5x and like what I want to do because um I mean we are an organization that fosters belonging we want people to feel like they're not feeling left out or they don't feel like they can like be themselves and um the stuff that I record are all like essentially how to like like get more intimately connected with yourself, but mm-hmm. to feel like, okay, when you're listening to this episode, you're not the only person because Harpo Didi is also going through this. Yeah. Yeah. And like yeah. so many girls follow me on Instagram and they're like, oh my God, like you live this like life and da da da. And I'm like, yep, but I'm the exact same as you. Like I go through the exact same shit as you. Yeah. I have the same feelings, I have the same problems. And so I don't ever want people to feel um, like they're they're different or they're yeah. less than. Or they're alone. And the podcast, yeah, the podcast is really just that. That's actually super yeah. heartwarming. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's the best yeah. re- reason to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the reason you can't burn out because of it. Because yeah. people come to you yeah. and they're like, "I was alone," and you can probably relate to like being younger and not having a podcast and like it'd be nice to have something that's yeah. going to do the same thing or yeah. something. Yeah. The same thing. And like, you know, I'm, I'm like a pseudo older sister to so many girls who listen yeah. and even older women who listen. They're like, wow, like I feel like I'm healing like an older version of me. You and I were talking downstairs about how your dad used to drive long haul. Yeah. And like my dad did too. My dad drove long haul and stop dating your dad is about my dad when he like wasn't around when I was a kid, how that impacted me. Exactly. And like all our community has a lot of fathers who were driving long haul. And I posted about it on Instagram and I got like, of people saying like oh my god me too like that used to happen i feel that way you know and so yeah. it yeah it's, these are the real stories of our community that like i feel like mm-hmm. add value i follow so many people on instagram that i've muted like straight up like yeah, same, yeah. yeah like yeah. i maybe can't unfollow them because Wait. of just like you know, i'm not i'm not cor- yeah maybe i'm not mm-hmm. re- courageous enough maybe i can't do it yet yeah, yeah. but i a lot of people muted because i'm like you're not adding value to my life and i feel like our community has that a lot right so yeah. i always think this Instagram story, this podcast, this blog post, me coming on to here, like, how is this going to add value to someone's life? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's actually yeah. really heartwarming. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. being you. That's yeah. uh, helping a lot of people in the community. <laughs> Thank right? you. My sister actually, okay, shout out, but my sister actually knows who you are as well. Okay. She wanted me to tell you that she says thanks. Oh. I don't know for what. She didn't tell thanks me for Spanish. what. Thanks, Spanish. Thanks, Spanish. She told me for what, but oh, she told me really thanks. Right? That's super sweet. Yeah. That's Bab. Sweet. Yes. So... What are you talking about, Nia? I'm I'm giving her. I know, I know. I wanted to ask you something directly as well, related. You can relate this back to Five X too. But when it comes to what you do outside of obviously Five X, I know you have the spiritual side of you that you're very in tune with. So how do you like use that to even foster like more connections outside of like what you do right now with 5X and also help you with your like just your job and everything out day to day? Well, I'm going to share a really special story as to why I'm in the position that I'm in. Uh, a couple years ago, this beautiful human sitting next to me walked into my Reiki <laughs> studio as a client. No mm. Harpo and I worked together for about a year mm. and uh, I was freelancing at the time. It was still right out of COVID, I think 2020. Well, we should tell the story. Okay, so before, like, <laughs> okay. the beginning, yeah. the beginning. Um, so let me let me, let me tell okay, you. Okay, you, you, <laughs> you tell me. Okay. So I used to work at Michael's. I worked there from nice. 14, uh, 15, fourteen to nineteen, right? Nice. Um, and uh, when I used to work there, there was obviously like a huge bead section. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one day, a girl walks in. She's got blue hair, and I'm like, oh my god, that's bad me to her. I've like stalked her Instagram, <laughs> and uh, she was funny. doing Buddha beads, but like not like semi precious gemstones yet, just yeah. like regular beads. And um, I usually work on the floor, but then I don't know why I was like, I gotta talk to this girl. So I went and I became her cashier that day, and mm. I no told Riz. her, I would, uh, yeah. <laughs> Riz. <laughs> what did you say? I was like Riz. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, while I was doing her checkout, I said to her, I said, oh, like I I follow you on Instagram, like I just like I'm so inspired by you, and da da da. I don't even know what it was at the time. 
dude, her blue hair inspired me so much. I dyed my hair blue, yeah. <laughs> like That's shortly so after. Sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. And then um, I don't know what happened. I think like eventually, like you know, like I don't know, over time, like you know, I had my own insecurities and jealousy and stuff. And then I unfollowed her because I was like, like you're just I don't know, like I just for some reason I unfollowed her. And then yeah. years went by, and then I didn't see her anything. 2020, I think, comes around. So like seven years later. Yeah, seven years later, wow. I went to like Sunshine Coast and I had like a pretty spiritual experience while I was there. And then when I came back, Bath started like coming on my like explore page. And I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen this girl in like seven years. And then I followed her back and then I noticed that she was doing Reiki. So then I emailed her, I sent up for like a mm. Reiki appointment. And then when I went to go see her, I told her, I said, you know, like you were in my life seven years ago, and then all of a sudden, after this like crazy spiritual experience on vacation, your profile popped up for me. Like, I feel like I need to like come and see you, and that's why I'm here. And then for a year, year we and a half, together. we worked together. Yeah. She would do Reiki on me, and then now you can tell the story. <laughs> no, that actually and that kind of reminds me of the invisible string theory. Yes, yeah. right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. we're connected. That's what I said to her too. Yeah. I said. You met me at the beginning of a of a cycle, and then at the end of the cycle, like yeah. in between, God was like, "Go figure it out on your own." Yeah. But this is yeah. the initiation, and this is the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was freelancing at the time. I had yeah. I had like a decade of marketing under my belt, and I was working with so many different clients. And Harpo just said, "Hey, I have a position at Five X," and I was familiar with Five X. I remember going to one of the first art parties with my husband, and she said, "We're looking for a marketing director. Um, would you consider this?" And um, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest, that right away I was like, I don't know. I had really bad experiences with brown people in this local community. Mm -hmm. It was literally my husband that was like, I think you should do it. Yeah. I think it'll be good. I uh. think that you are the right person to take this community to a next level with a really strong team. And so I thought about it for a little bit and then I said yes. And it was the best yes I've ever said. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Besides when my husband asked me to marry him. Yo, I was gonna say, <laughs> I gotta say. That, and that's that's really where we are today. Um, fast forward to this festival. I had someone ask me, they're like, you know, it's really rare to see two Punjabi women work yeah. so closely together and be in such a strong, powerful position and really hold space for each other. And she said, how do you do it? And I'm like, you know, it's not just about like, how do you do it? It's what we've done to be here um there's a lot of respect yeah. a lot of mutual love a lot of compassion and we both understand that without one another like it just we, wouldn't work right it just wouldn't work yeah. yeah yeah i was talking to my best friend on the phone on the way here and um she goes i need to say something to you she goes i i made a post recently about our relationship and how it was during the festival she said i wa i read the caption and i just want to say um I, she, my friend knows how much i struggled with my relationship with women and she goes, I just want you to know that, like, it was never just you. It was never your fault. It was never a you problem. You just didn't have somebody that would, like, meet you halfway. And she goes, Bav meets you halfway. She respects you. She doesn't compete with you. She doesn't wow. put you down. She's not disrespectful. And she goes, that is why this works. And I said, equally as well, yeah. right? Like, I, I've internalized this where I'm like, there's something wrong with me. Like, mm -hmm. why can't I get along with other brown girls? Mm -hmm. Even though I'm Harpo yeah. Didi, like, why can't I get along with other brown girls? And it's because we we individually have such a strong, like, self-love and self-care practice. Like, yeah. we are active meditators. We have a relationship with nature. We exercise. We put good food in our bodies. Like, mm -hmm. we really take care of ourselves, right? And we address the trauma that we've been through. Mm -hmm. And I think we don't project it on each other. Yeah. Um, and when we are, we're so real. Like the other day, she was like, "Can you just let me do my job?" And I was like, "You're <laughs> fucking right." She was asking me about stickers, and I was like, "Please, <laughs> please. let me do my job." But we're so direct. And I think we're not. We don't do that often, right? That's like, good, yeah. Though. Like yeah. think about how many of our like moms and dads don't talk to their siblings and cousins yeah. anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And we're I was like actually that. about to say she's like, "That's so nice to hear," because like even like being a brown girl myself, like I can totally relate to that. Right? Yeah. We're so yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 I think it's, it's wired. Yeah. Like it's really like rare to actually like find another brown girl that you actually connect with and can like meet halfway. Because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like a girl thing, but they. We just get so jealous of each other. Yeah. yeah. And I, then there's like the ego, so many things. I think something that I noticed about Harpo right away, like when I started working as her practitioner, was in any room she was in, she would mention my name. Mm. 
And that was very rare. Like yeah. so-and-so would be like, hey, Harpo mentioned me or Harpo recommended you. And that just continued for both of us. And that's yeah. when I realized like, there is something genuine here that we both, I don't think, have experienced before in a it's relationship. terrifying, actually. In a professional and personal relationship. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you know what people say? It's hard to balance, like, friends and business, right? Yeah. And they say yeah. it all the time because you get into those arguments and stuff. I, yeah. I argue the opposite. I think it actually makes you stronger if you can get that through yeah. it, right? I also you have maturity. And yeah. You have respect for one another. And we yeah. both have really strong boundaries. That's Very good strong though. boundaries. Even yeah. though we're in constant communication with work and yeah. we do know what's going we're like on. We're like literally all on the toilet, like yeah. texting <laughs> each other, calling each other. If I'm on the toilet and Bab calls, I'm still answering. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know that's, I mean? that's where your personal comes in as well. Totally. Because right? yeah. you're totally. comfortable doing it, right? Yeah. But there's right. also some days where it's like the entire weekend, I don't reply back to a text or she, yeah. she doesn't pick up my call, and that's okay. That's okay. Because yeah. we know that the other person is just doing their thing. Yeah. yeah. And when they're ready, they'll come back. Yeah. Would you guys also like agree that like it's hard making friends as adults like it's a yes big, yeah. Big experience, yeah. yes know? because i'll tell you you know what it says meeting halfway not many people are willing to do that nowadays and i'll t and like one thing is too like people always want to say like i think we talked about this outside the attachment styles it doesn't just apply to relationships also friendships as well yeah. right yeah so you were telling me outside if you know me like mentioning like, you're an anxious attachment i'm right? an anxious attachment Bab, what are you Oh. She's just detached. Detached. <laughs> she fucking yeah. only dated like one man. Well, no, but like you know what I mean. She's been with someone for like ten yeah, years. Yeah, but yeah. I think yeah. my my long term relationship with my husband has really taught. He taught me to detach. That's for good. Sure. Yeah. yeah. From so many different things in my life, from like family, for example, living on the other side of the country, yeah. to friends who also some of my best friends live in different parts of the world, to even detaching myself to like brands that I work with. And mm. that's a common thing for Harpo and I. We are driven by purpose. It's good. We're not mm. driven by um, a, a certain type of look, yeah. a certain monetary yeah. value, a certain brand, a certain feel. It's really purpose. Yeah. And I don't think I've met anybody in this industry that I could yeah. really yeah. correlate with that. And I think she's actually secure. Yeah, because, that's what I was going to say. Because um, I felt that in our friendship as well. Like, I've mm -hmm. never had anxious uh, energy or avoidant energy. Yeah. She's a very secure attachment style, I would say. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jasmine, what about you? What do you, what do you say you are? Um, honestly, it's so funny that we were talking about it because I literally just read um, yeah. Attached. Ab attached, yeah, yeah, last year. And, like, it makes you th go through all these like, little tests. Mine's yeah. actually secure. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Love that for you. Yeah. Good, good job. yeah. Great. Brown girl, <laughs> you are breaking the, the cycle right there. Good yeah. job. What good about job. you, Marof? What do you think? For me? Uh, yeah. do, do you even I don't know. I'm pretty detached. detached. Well, I, I'm not like, a, I'm going to be real, yo. Like it, it's not my thing as much. So like, you I know, wouldn't know. You know what's interesting? I was reading about the difference between unattached and detached. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of us throw around the term detached. detached. But detached oh, wow. is not necessarily always healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Detached also means that you're zoning the F out and you yeah. you might not be wanting to deal with it. Whereas unattached means you're actually mm -hmm. processed it and you've allowed yeah. yourself. I was yeah. detached for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I would I would <laughs> think that I would work through it. Yeah. But really when I got down to the root of it, I was like, no, when I surrender, I'm actually unattached. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, uh, you might just be actually just avoiding. Yeah, then you might just be avoidant, right? Yeah. But like for me, I'm a I'm an avoidant slash anxious. I'm a dual. Yeah. I don't know why I'm like this. I think, but I was correcting you. Trauma. Like, I think that's what it is. That's I think what you, said, yes, you, know, yes, you, yes. you know what it is. Like without getting way too vulnerable on the pod, right? <laughs> Actually, no. Fuck it. Why not? Let's, you know what, do fuck, it. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, and this is right. so rare for brown men. Come okay, on. Okay, fuck yeah. it. Let's do it. You know what? You're gonna you know break what? the barrier. Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. So as a child, right? Like uh, my a lot of my parents have always done really right by me, but just because immigration, immigration, uh, immigrants and stuff, they were working very long hours and I just never really got to spend mm. a lot of time Born with them around, growing up, right? right? Long distance trucking, mom work nights, right? So it was kind of like difficult in that aspect because um, I always would feel like I always, I developed an avoidant early on, but then I, when my parents finally came back home, like or when they started to work, like my dad does like, like not doesn't do long hell anymore. He does like, like yeah. local, right? And so my mom doesn't work at nights anymore, she works morning. So I see them more often. So to see that immediate shift, it kind of like, it kind of like without it's not their fault by any means it but confuses like, your it normal could, it, exactly it yeah. confused me it like flipped my world upside down yeah. so then i became more of an anxious almost yeah because i was like always kind of like now they're like like asking me so many more questions i go like, oh, like before it was like never like they never asked me anything but now they're even more involved yeah. like like more than i like normally was used to so i became more anxious because i'd be like oh report card like all right yeah. and obviously i wasn't the smartest kid but yeah. uh initially growing up you right you wanted to satisfy them yeah no no and exactly right so it, like uh, that's the thing but my parents never put that unnecessary pressure 
pressure on me, but I put it on myself. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's on me. But because of that, like my relationships with people have become very like, it's almost like a, I, w- I wouldn't say bipolar cause it's not, but it, it's like that sort of thing where I can flip between the two yeah. subconsciously. It's your pattern. It's a pattern. Right. Yeah. And then I've recognized it and I work on it and I've gotten way better with it. But one thing too, it's like, um, my thing is I can, if I feel like a person isn't pouring into me enough mm. in, in terms of just like being not in, like, not in like a clingy way or anything, but just in general, right? This There's goes no for reciprocity. In the yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just feels very empty. Yeah. And it makes me feel empty. And that's where boundaries kick in. That's where boundaries mm-hmm. kick in. But the problem is with the avoidance side of things, sometimes I don't set the boundaries early. Mm-hmm. And then I'll mm-hmm. and then I'll like screw myself over later because then I'll be like, oh, you never mentioned this X, Y, Z before. So why is it a problem now? And it's like, no, yeah. that's not what I'm trying to communicate. And a lot of people don't know how to argue properly either or have like <laughs> like proper conversation. Well, like open communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open communication yeah. and allowing the other person to be heard. Yeah, right? like, that's yeah. a huge thing in mm-hmm. our community. Like even in my own personal relationship, there were so many times where I feel like my husband was saying one thing and I was saying, other and then yeah. we were like hold on are we even listening, listening. to one yeah. another because yeah. it's okay for us to disagree of course but is it okay for us to not hold space for each other exactly. that's yeah. where our, that's what problems are yeah you're in mm-hmm. different direction because you're like i l- learned about this the hard way but it's like a debt snowball like it's almost not a death snowball sorry it's a resentment snowball you're building up yeah. essentially like if you don't hold that space eventually it's just going to come all crashing down right yeah. and it's going to come out one way or another i learned that the hard way so and everything's a reflection yeah, yeah. The end of the day, shit that pisses you off Shit that inspires you, yeah. or pisses you off. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all it's something that's it's all relative. Yeah. It's all I'd relative. also say that like the all the like work that I'm doing right now actually just shows me that it's just a lack of presence. Actually, yeah. like yeah. this most simple solution to everything and the actual mm-hmm. answer to life is to be present. Present. Yeah. And so when you're arguing and you're not listening, it's because you're thinking about something else. You're th- another thing you're yeah. thinking about what you're gonna say. Yeah. What you're gonna. You're say. not actively listening. Yeah. 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 Hearing right. and listening are two different. Two different things. things. Exactly. Yeah. When right? you're anxious, you're living in the past or you're living in the future. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the thing is though, at the same time, holding space also comes in a form of not just being holding space for that person just so they can get their point across so you can just be done with it it's also understanding and being like okay like i hear you yeah. and then like making sure there's like an actual like kind of like not an apology but an understanding of like okay you hurt me so now this is like this is i understand that and this is how it can be better but then also don't apologize for things you didn't do because a lot of people also fall into that trap too someone yeah. brings That's something up pleasing right exactly, well yeah. like th- what are the trauma responses it's fight Light, yeah. freeze, and actually fawn. Fawn, fawn is one yeah. too. We always yeah, forget fawn, fawn is to I've people actually never please. Heard of only, only it's not fawn. very common, but it's yeah. to people please. So like immediately when someone does something, You're your like clingy. trauma response is like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, what can I do now? And then, yeah. you know, yeah. you'll like, like we see this in our moms, right? Like yeah. they'll go and be like, okay, like I'm gonna go make sog now, right? It's gonna take yeah. me hours, yeah. right? I'm gonna go clean <laughs> so, or I'm gonna go do this. Yeah. Like just to like yeah. kind of like satisfy this person one way. So have you thought through in this process, like which, what your attachment style is now? Kind? I don't know. I, I think honestly, I, I still kind of like say. So describe it. Guilty tash. Yeah. yeah. Describe it. Like, what do you think? What do you? What are some things that you notice about yourself? About me? Like, if it, like, let's say me and you and Garner argument. Like, how would you like? How do you act? I feel act? like honestly, I feel like like knowing both of you, like I agree with yours, and I think his would be like avoid secure. It? No, I think it would be secure. He doesn't. Yeah. Know, he doesn't avoid like conflict or issues or anything like. He's uh, pretty. How would you have that? You know, like, yeah. No, no, uh, he's a very like chill, laid back guy. Like I would say, it's secure. Manav, I think you're secure for sure. But the thing is, sometimes I feel like you get like overwhelmed with like other things, and then you kind of just avoid it for a little bit. As but well. like yeah, in like, relationships, what are yeah. you like? In relationships, in relationships, if I feel like it's not going <laughs> my way, yeah. right? <laughs> Okay, I'll wait, just no. be like, I don't want to, like, like I don't know, yo. I okay, can't I just, I, like, I'll be, I'll be honest. Like, yeah. For yeah. me, like, I just haven't had a relationship like that to this day. Yeah. Where I've been, like, really, really just, like, I can analyze it like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's complicated. It's kind of deep, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We're but, getting like, deep right now. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Am I going to need that to do some, like, chakra readings? And I mean, I'm pretty yeah. sure this started with you guys asking me a question, and I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we yeah, derailed very and heavy. Spirituality and yeah. your role and, you know, yeah. all that. But the thing is, too, like, just on that, because of that topic, we got into, like, the attachment styles. Yeah. I think the reason we got into it, because, like, a lot of people go into spiritual, like, uh, spirituality and yeah. stuff after they've been through so many trauma responses, or, through, sorry, so much trauma, and, like, they develop and they realize, okay, like, I'm going through this, 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 and this. I need to maybe, like, unlock something else to kind of cope with it. Yeah, I started yeah. to find resources, and I yeah. realized a lot of people in our community didn't have and the more education and wisdom we throw around, the stronger we can be as a community. Mm-hmm. 90% of my client base are South Asian people. I've had aunties, uncles, kids, um, you know, people like our age range, yeah. so yeah. many walks of life. I've had 
middle-aged brown men that have left therapy with a, a person that's not of color and they don't resonate with them and then they've come to me consistently mm -hmm. like once a week once every other month because it just works I mean besides the energy healing aspect of it I would say there's a therapeutic aspect of it literally yeah. the first half an hour we're just chatting like this mm -hmm. and as the client is talking to me there's something that just hits my intuition and I understand the root of the problem, but they may not get it. Mm -hmm. And so then we focus on that one thing yeah. and then we get in a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper. And then working with your chakras is another thing. Your chakras yeah. are essentially like portals, verte yeah. vortexes in yeah. your body. Each one correlates to a different aspect in your life. So like if you went through a really traumatic, let's say relationship, you might have some stuck energy in your heart chakra and then you're trying to date somebody else and it's not working. It's not working because you still have energy from that past relationship mm -hmm. that you're keeping forward. Yeah. But we, what we don't understand as a community, and I've talked about this quite a bit, is that there's energy from our ancestors, from our parents, from our grandparents. It's called generational trauma. And that shit lives deep in your bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It does. Yeah. We have all probably had a parent or grandparent or great-grandparent that has fled from war or a different country or we've yeah. lost family members. Yeah. Now that shit stays. It stays in your DNAs. Mm -hmm. And when your grandmother was giving birth to your mother, you were already pretty much born. Your cells were already in your mother. Yeah. And so that trauma lives inside of you until you do the healing work to allow it to be. So there was a lot of things when I started doing my own healing work that, and I mean, healing is inevitable. It, it, it's it's yeah. a cycle that you're always going to have as a human being. Yeah. You're never not mm -hmm. fully yeah but it started to come up and i'm like why am i feeling let's say abandonment issues when i'm like yeah. i don't think i've experienced that in this lifetime and then i got in deep and i realized maybe one of my parents has experienced that yeah mm. why do i have an avoidant style well maybe because i saw that in one of my parents or my grandparents or my siblings or something growing up and so until you allow yourself to confront that yeah. and really surrender and drop in into it mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to allow yourself to move forward yeah, mm -hmm. and the thing is, people have so much. The biggest thing I think that is a killer of relationships, any any form of relationship, is pride, yeah. and ego, right? Yeah. So, and also not recognizing that there's an issue, because a lot of guys in our community, especially, will like even like like the conversation I'm having right now, like a lot of guys will not have this conversation. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back by saying this. I'm just being honest. Absolutely. Right. Like a lot of my cousins, older cousins, like people I know that I'm very close with, will not, will just run away from this conversation yeah. in general. Your ego is attached to your identity. Yeah. Your identity yeah. is something that is made. It mm -hmm. does not exist. Yeah. If I was to go in and open up your heart right now, I wouldn't find you're this tall from Abbotsford and this and that. Like it doesn't exist. It doesn't something exist. that's made. And so when you're so attached to something that doesn't exist, mm -hmm. how crazy is that concept? Yeah. And so the ego is what runs the character. The soul is what runs the purpose. If yep. you can connect deeper to the soul, then a lot of this materialistic stuff doesn't matter. Is not going to matter to yeah. you, and no. that's where you find fulfillment and enlightenment. But that's also what they say in Sikhi as well as attachment yeah. from worldly things, yes. right? And that's what people don't realize because it's like a lot of people will hear what you're saying right now on the yeah. podcast and be like, "You know, padani koshe ami bolli andi, right?" Yeah. A lot of brown guys specifically, I'm just not, right? Mm -hmm. But come see me. Yeah, literally, <laughs> right? But like that's the thing people don't realize that. These things have already been said, maybe in a different form or a different format of like how yeah. it's presented, but it's all connected back to the same thing. And I've had these conversations with people. They're like, yeah. oh, I'm good. And I'm like, okay, so then why do you need to buy this thing? Well, because it makes me happy. But then why does it make you happy? Because you yeah. need it again. So mm. if you were to buy another T-shirt, if you were to buy another pair of sneakers, what is that fulfilling in you? Yeah. Yeah. What if tomorrow none of this even mattered existed, or none of it yeah. existed? Yeah. Yeah. What else would matter to you? And then when that, like when we get in deep, they're like, well, you're changed to things, right? Yeah. Like you're changed yes. to, and also, I mean, a lot of the work that Bav and I have done is on survival pattern work, like so mm. what your what your life is like when you're in survival mode, right? Yeah. And quite often, like we have experienced a pain, right? When we say trauma, trauma is a bit of a loaded word. Like is, pain yeah. is a word oh, that you yeah. can use, trauma right? Trauma is an, an emotion. And it's emotional experience. Mm -hmm. It's any event that yeah. changes yeah. your life, right? Yeah. Cool. So um, when you're experiencing pain, right? Like you when you have pain in your body, you don't want to feel the pain. You're like, yeah, of course. I, you're like, I want to get away from this as much as possible. Some people numb it by buying things. Some yeah. people numb it with drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. Some people numb it with work, yeah. right? Yeah. Some people numb it with like relationships. And yeah. so like, that's all that really is. It's like, you're not yeah. free, right? And the, mm. the more you start to like actually 
work with the pain and sit with it and address it, the less you actually have to like numb yourself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I actually like this is related to your original question to Bob that we've skirted around. Mm-hmm. I don't think that like what happens on the meditation pillow and the yoga mat is separate when we're showing up at 5x. Yep. Yeah. It's not separate when we're showing up in this room yeah. because like I always say like I learned this from Maya Angelo. She goes, when I'm in like in a conversation, I everything that I have is right here, right? Everything that I do and don't do is right here. And I think that her as a Reiki master, her as a, you know, gemstone business owner, her as a meditator, her as a coach, None of that is separate when she's at work, right? Yeah, she's yeah, at work as that person. And also, like, we are able to do something as fucking wild as run that festival mm. because we are those people also. Yeah. But right? those people who you are are what define, not just defines you, but also helps you build that character to also drive forward what you guys will actually yeah. want to go Yeah, to and I'm not going to lie, for a lot of my life, I was so many different versions of me. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until... I got to this position and really hit my 30s that I was like, I can be all versions of me. And a great example of that is earlier this year when we were programming for the festival, a lot of us on the team were just burnt out. It was like sometime in January and we were just like, we're exhausted. We we really need to focus on our Mm self-care. And that's where the idea of Self-Care Sunday with 5X came to be. We put on an event that really... um, that really celebrated a lot of mindfulness and wellness activities that have deep roots in the South Asian community. A lot of these activities are now um, the profit off of and they're westernized and they've been colonized in a certain way. (laughs) And so now to be in a space where we can have more people that look like us, like guys and girls that felt really connected and they're like, this was cool. I've never tried to meditate. I've never tried breath work. Yeah. Like that's why we do what we do. And this all started because we were burned out one day, yeah. and we were all like, "What do we need more of in our life? Self care. Well, if we need it, our community needs it. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. why we started to literally take everything we program and do as a reflection of if we need it, yeah. so does everybody yeah, totally. else. Self care, like in our community, is such a touchy subject. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Such a touchy, yeah. touchy subject. Mm-hmm. Like, why is it though? Like that's like I've always wondered. It's it. taboo. Yeah. It's taboo well, because also like you didn't have the time for it. Like yeah. when you were driving long haul and working night shifts, did you have time to do like a meditation? When you were or fleeing from one country to another with yeah. nothing in your pocket, no. did yeah. you have time? No, no you didn't. Yeah. And right? it really does it, it 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 stems from our religion. I mean our guru spent a lot of time yeah. meditating and 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 really focusing on finding enlightenment within them. And then yeah. along the yeah. ways when colonization came through and we were ripped from really our riches, mm. we didn't have the privilege to do that anymore. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's yeah. where this generation comes in, and that's where we tap into yeah. what yeah. we were originally meant to do in this lifetime. Like, you know what it is? At 5X, one thing, a couple of things, right? So, Moga, first of all, no matter where you go, everyone loves Moga, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, we, we and Manor were talking about this off the pod, and related back to you guys, that, but know Moga is just such a good person just because even when he's not there everyone is singing his praises yeah. right they're just like he's such a nice guy you guys probably like know this already but the amount of people that would come up to me and be like oh yeah you know like shout out Bab, shout out Harpo man like you know always just checking in and stuff always doing such good work right mm-hmm. and it's not even just people in VIP it's just people that maybe even just in the general crowd like whatever like it's it's it goes beyond just like what like even sometimes we can even realize that understand like how many people we might impact even yeah. for us, we kind of, I sometimes get lost in it too. I don't even like yeah. think. But then what, mm-hmm. like that one message we got, the person that was like, oh, I watch your podcast, help me because it's really like rough time. Yeah. And stuff like that. You don't even realize how many people you can really help by just doing things that you yeah. love, right? Yeah. And I would actually like to know like what your perception of 5X was like before you got acquainted with I it. I didn't know 5X like that. That's yeah. the thing, right? I, I'm being honest. Like I knew what it was the year prior, right? That was different. Yeah, yeah. Was different, yeah. Yeah, mine was different. I actually knew when it hurt and wanted to go so many times. Yeah. And... You know how girls are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, yeah. to be completely transparent, we know that this industry and maybe even some of our events are very dude bro heavy. <laughs> we know that for a fact, yeah. right? Yeah. When there's anything, whether you're going to a club jam, whether you're going to somebody's show, even the Punjabi music industry, it is run by men. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of us brown women or just women in general, we don't feel comfortable. Some attending. brown dudes also, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like yeah. if you're not subscribed to that, like hyper masculine sort of, you know, identity, and you feel that way too. And that's one thing we're striving to change about our community, whether it's programming more female artists, whether it's having yeah. more females on our team or really just yeah. like 
changing the presence of that so that someone like you, even if you're alone, feels comfortable enough to come yeah. because yeah. we feel the exact same way and we run the organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jasmine on the board of 5X next year. Call it now. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. down. Yeah. No, yeah, I've always like heard about it. So I to, actually, I wanted to bring something up too about it. But um, yeah, like I thought it was like amazing, but it's just like, I don't know. Honestly, I think last year I tried to volunteer as well, but then I think I, the leader found the email in my spam. Account. That happens a lot, actually. Yeah. I got to look really? into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your email email directly my spam. Job. You guys do a lot of email marketing. Yes. yes. So like sometimes if you email market to like too many untargeted audiences, yeah. like Gmail just flags your domain. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll and just hire you part yeah, of my you team. Just, now. just like got <laughs> to get a different too. domain, keep yeah. it clean, only send it to people that you really. Yeah. Know. Thanks, email man. I'll give you a call. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> too much wrong. Yeah, I knew, no, like, Consulting. Yeah, I think one hundred one right there. Yeah. Okay. No. So I, I, okay. I wanted to ask about the whole um, Siddhu Musiala thing because you know I saw he was like a headliner. Mm. What like mm. couple years? Yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then it got canceled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So what do you want to ask? <laughs> like, what and happened? I, I know What's me and Bob were talking about it before. Like, yeah, like what happened? Like that, that, uh, from like what yeah. I heard, like I'm sure it's just rumors is that there just wasn't enough security for him because you know, he's got big No, artists. it was actually um, like I can give you a very frank answer. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to program um, brown talent, BIPOC talent in the city of Surrey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the city staff are great, but yeah. um, we run into a lot of challenges. Like we, you know, we know that these kinds of challenges don't exist in Vancouver. So yeah. it's been so hard for us to book talent like Siddhu Musiala and even Karnajla. Like. I can't tell you how many times we had the opportunity to book him because he was the right kind of artist. He was yeah. emerging, he was making waves. Um, but we have to get our lineup approved by the city council and mm-hmm. it just wasn't getting approved. And with Sidhu Musiala, it was ba- he was banned by the Surrey RCMP a week before. Wow. Um, and so, and, and like, you know, it's interesting because the reasons that they use are like promoting gang violence yeah. or like, you know, He's all these kinds of this video, all these oh. kinds of things. But it's like, OK, well, first of all, we actually have those issues in our community. And yeah. music is just a reflection of culture and community. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, it was it was challenging. And like now he's passed away. And the same people that were like, oh, he's he's bad. He's this and that yeah. are like singing, singing his praises. His praises. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, same thing with Karanajla, like, you know, now Buddy's just huge like yeah so that's, that's it we lost yeah. our opportunity right yeah um as a community as a Sur- city of surrey um and so we do a lot of advocacy like i know everybody sees the festival but like almost like every other month or like every month i'm talking to a politician like yeah. i'll talk to our mayor i'll talk to all these people because there's so much education that you have to do and you have to be like you gotta pay attention and you have to also remove the barriers for us yeah. so like we're an anti-racist organization at the end of the day because yeah. we're being like you guys cannot penalize us in like you wouldn't do this to a non-bipoc organization yeah. Yeah. So you cannot do this to yeah. us so yeah, the okay. Sindhu thing was just purely purely that what yeah does non-bipoc mean white oh okay. bipoc is like black indigenous person of color yeah non-BIPOC is yeah. just good. Yeah. I'm not trying to be yeah. like straight up about that because yeah, yeah, there yeah. are a lot of like white people and organizers and organizations that are like really strong allies for us in the music industry but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah like the systems and institution and then like the colonization of your mind is yeah. so hard yeah. to get out of. There's right? so much red tape to it. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people yeah. just yeah. know like, like yeah. BC, Canada, Surrey or whatever in general because we yeah. have a lot of red tape. Well like yeah. even yeah. like, like sorry to cut you off but like even I went to the A.P. Dillon concert at Rogers Arena mm-hmm. I have been to so many concerts at Rogers Arena and I have never seen that many police officers. Yeah. yeah. Like it why do you need no, to have that exactly. many and like gang yeah. task yeah. force, like big yeah. guns? Yeah. Like, it just doesn't make, yeah. sense. It doesn't make sense. You're you're criminalizing a community, right? Yeah, and yeah. the thing is like that's uh, it's so bad because optically, like to the people that aren't like as let's say not educated but just don't know they're going to automatically make that assumption that, okay, this is like, these people are just trouble, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the six bus comments. I'm calling them out. I don't care. Their comments are horrendous uh, mm. towards the brown people. Yeah. And I feel like they're ca- like they're doing it. Every time they post, literally, you guys read the comments. I, I kid you not, like, anyone on the listening spot, go read the comments on any brown-related post on six bus. It's literally like, get them out of our country. They don't deserve to yeah. be here. And or like, any post on international students. Exactly. Yeah. On, on yeah. Yeah. Especially that. And I saw a TikTok on it too, and it was this, it was this one dude, right? This one um, African, uh, like um, African Canadian dude that like, literally posted this, and he was just like, I don't get it. He's like, first it was us, mm. like a couple years back, and now it's the brown people. Like yeah. what? Why? Yeah. And it's like so. Well, it's such you think a you're listening to like a vocal that. minority though, because no. I know I feel like online well, comments are like well, a vocal I, I minority. I think right? I think um like. I, I took a critical race studies class in, in um, university and my professor actually pointed this out because in like 
in communities where there's a lot of like uh, black people, yeah, their experience is anti-blackness, right? Yeah, like, that is the experience. Like in, institutionally, systemically, it's anti-blackness. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to a community where there are not that many black ne- black people there, for yeah. example, Vancouver compared to Toronto, yeah. there's like very less brown black people here. Um, the anti-blackness just gets shifted. And yep. so it's not the brown people that are experiencing racism. It's the elements of their culture that reflect or are inspired by mm. black mm. culture that are experiencing anti-blackness. So like yeah. the hip hop yeah. artists that are Punjabi, it's yeah. the blackness of their experience. And it's yeah. not the same because like black people are literally like treated like they're dehumanized. We, yeah. we can't even fathom to experience that. Yeah. But it's the blackness of the culture that becomes, it's the anti-blackness. Yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's that. funny because when my, my husband, would all, when he first started coming here, he's like, w- you guys, the brown people here, are the kale yeah. of this city. And I didn't understand what he meant by mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. until yeah. you know we started to go out yeah. to other places and realized they really, really see us as that here. They yeah. do, yeah. And it's not like, again, like not nearly the same experience, no. but yeah. also like, then our own community is so anti-black too, yeah. right? Yeah. Like we yeah. love the culture, but when it's when it's our it's turn to, to stand up, we don't, right? Yeah. We never yeah. do, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 I think like yeah. honestly, brown people are the most racist against brown people. Brown people, like I brown would, on brown. I would brown say, brown. would you say I, racist or would you say yeah, more like internalized racism? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you yeah. Say I would. <laughs> I think yeah. so. That's fuck. Yeah. yeah. You know, my yeah. my mom and I went to Costco, and there's like an auntie at the end of the Costco. Sorry, sorry if her kids are listening. She's so mean to brown people, Your right? Mom? No, the auntie that works at Costco there. Oh, yeah. And my mom goes, right. <laughs> but she'll smile at the gore. And I said, mom, just stop for a second and think about how how hard her relationship with herself probably is mm-hmm. because if she's hating on other brown people, yeah. she must not really like herself that much. Yeah. And so actually you probably just need to give her more love and compassion because That's she's true. just projecting. And instead of feeling like she can belong, she's trying to... Fit, fit in, in yeah. yeah with yeah. the like with, yeah. the wrong, with the wrong strong people yeah. right like, like, but the, yeah. yeah and it's not it's not a bad thing to try to fit into different pockets of communities but if you feel like you have to like kind of diss your own community to get to that point then it's like well, just diss anyone at the end or just day. anyone yeah. in general like, to get belong to right like yeah. like there's a difference between fitting in and belonging yeah, like this is canada like the whole thing is it's, pre- it's literally predicated on immigration for one of the things well, it's a settler colonial project right yeah. and it has so not ended but now yeah. it's it's times of change right it's cool yeah, to be brown changed. yeah it's yeah. cool yeah. to be brown i remember i like, think like we control so much of the gdp of this country that it's like <laughs> what is it no one thousand percent right? but we're but, but, but like, that, that's like the, if you really look at it at the end of the day right i notice that countries where like immigrants don't control a lot of the gdp they're racist as fuck like systemically yeah. and where yeah. they do they're not and if uh, you look at where it all comes down to, which is money and power. But do you see how you're a means to an end? They don't actually care about you. Yeah. 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 You're just, you're just a, a voter and yeah. you're just, just a, a GDP number. contributor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so again, there's a dehumanization there. Yeah. Some people honestly don't have anyone to talk to. Yeah. And I've realized this is actually really sad. Yeah. yeah. The amount of people that I've talked to on a day to day basis that just say I'm alone. I yeah. feel really isolated. Even with the people in relationships I've talked to, they just feel isolated. And that's the thing. A lot of people just want to talk, but how many people are listening? Yeah. Like really listening. Yeah, like, do you know one thing about how I'm really happy with this conversation is, like, I feel like everyone here is, like, genuinely, like, really pitching into everything. <laughs> and, like, really, like, we're getting into a point where it's, like, actually, like, super, like, I know this conversation is going to help someone. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I hope like, so. There's yeah. a lot of good eye contact here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah no. Yeah. Um, I, have, of, I have a question that's kind of off topic. I know we were, we were like, really in it, deep, right? yeah. deep into yeah. it. Yeah, went on the um, yeah, how, how's it like living with the legend, aka Amazing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How's his life living with me? Uh, no, because like honestly, like growing up, I used to like watch his videos like on repeat because like, you know how everyone knows how AK is. He doesn't yeah. really, he doesn't release for like years yeah. and then he'll drop it and then yeah. come back. Yeah. And now he's like on the Punjab p- patrol thing. The what is it called again? Yeah, police. It's not Punjab yeah. police. What the hell? Punjab police. Internet, internet, internet no, internet, police. Internet, internet, internet police. police. That's what it is. Yeah. Internet police. Yeah. I see those videos. I'm like, okay, he's coming back. Yeah. yeah. He's making a comeback. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I met Amin, I was 19. I'm now 31, so long time. Yeah. Um, my whole life changed. I felt like both of us went through a really deep spiritual awakening. Mm-hmm. And um, we just went on a journey. We did 10 years of long distance. So yeah. he would come here, or I would go out there, and yeah. he would spend months at a time here. I would spend weeks there. Um, and again what, what what drove us was was purpose we're very privileged to have the relationship that we have mm-hmm. um it is something that even with with my own friends these days i see how hard it is to find 
a partner that can understand you. At me, bro. What the hell? <laughs> I'm not talking about you yeah. specifically. But yeah. yeah. No, I do. I do agree with that though. I, feel you, I don't. Yeah. Think, I feel like it doesn't matter like how old you are and what age you're at. Yeah. Like it's. I feel like nowadays, especially, it's very hard to find someone that like you, you know your like beliefs everything aligned with. He's pushed me past my comfort zone. Um, I'd like to think that I've pushed him past his. I mean, yeah. Yeah. like. Harpo knows him well enough to know like what he's like online is not really no, what he's such a different person in real life. <laughs> yeah. Really? How is he different? Um he just he's like like a like I think we see we see like a fun like one aspect of him, right? Like he's he's like one part of his identity, but in real life there's a totality to him. Like yeah. there's moments when he's feeling vulnerable, mm-hmm. moments when he's feeling doubtful, and then there's yeah. moments where he's really joyous and he's just funny and he's warm and he's welcoming. Um I like saw the both of them at the beach so we were we all went to the beach the three of us the other day and i'm like walking back and they're both like hugging each other and Aww. i'm like oh my god ak amazing has feelings <laughs> 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 so there's just like a totality to him right in yeah. person but um i'm i can actually say that i'm st- like i fan girl stan girl still every to this day. time like he's like you know he's my like he's my he's my soul sister's husband right yeah. and so he's like family job. but still he'll come to my <laughs> yeah. house and i'll text mm-hmm. rescue them like okay he's at our house you know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh, so yeah i think yeah. he's he's a gem of a human and i think he's he's just barely shown the world his potential yeah, yeah. he's he's changed my life absolutely yeah. he has in so many ways um and uh, i'm definitely the woman that i am today because of because of him like yeah. we were kids when we met you know we yeah. grew up together um, we we are privileged to work in similar industries, um, and to now be in the space. I mean, we we just talked yeah. about it earlier, but for people to now be like, "Hey, you're Babs' husband!" Like, it's really yeah. it's really a uh, full circle for us. But I I forget all the time what he means to the community. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah. And people will always come up and ask for photos and be like, "Oh, you must get this all the time, or you must not be used to this, or you must." And I'm like. It's wholesome. It's wholesome to experience it from the inside, from the yeah. outside. Yeah. Um, Amen is who he is because of because of our father, our, my father in law. Like yeah. mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 funny now because now people are seeing dad more and more, and they're understanding yeah. that he is literally portraying my father in law like mm-hmm. to, the exactly. tea, to the T. To the T. I feel like he's been doing it though since like day one with his videos. And and that's his his form of expression, right? Yeah. Like he didn't grow up having the strongest relationship, like how he is very close with his dad now. Yeah. And that was his way of really connecting and releasing. And that was his way of healing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know if he shared it on this pod, but there was a moment in, in his career, like very early on, where he was at a, at a banquet hall party. Well, he did, he did, he did, and he did. the uncle came up to yeah. him and was like, you changed my life. Yeah, I stopped. Be- yeah. Them, yeah. Yeah. So and, and, and we have both had a lot of moments like that. And yeah. it's very, very, very heartful to see that, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, even when when, you know, people will recognize me or see me out. It's it's nice to be known as his wife because, yeah. you know, there are a couple of haters out there, yeah. but there's yeah. way, way, way more, more love. love. You, know yeah. what, you know what's so like for me, it's like so like to see that and hear that but because one thing i want to like just ask you don't you like a lot of women probably would feel like i'm not so and so's wife i'm my own person yeah you have you ever felt like in the beginning 100 percent. but that is what drove me to create what i am today yeah like even when i started my my reiki studio he was the one that really encouraged it when i it was 5x he was the one really encouraged i was a really big introvert in the beginning yeah and Amin was one that was like listen i know you're talented i know you're creative yeah you just need that push Mm -hmm. and so if it wasn't for that push and that support i don't think i would really be in the space that i am now yeah so and it and and it goes for both ways right there are days where he's just like ready to give up and throw in the towel and i'm like nope let's do it again let's run it again like there are videos that you guys have seen that i have shot and i've helped with you know like there are projects that i've done that he's shot he's helped with yeah and that's uh, awesome like i feel like it was my first time actually meeting ak at ak ak amazing (laughs) yeah ak tv now yeah Yeah. Yeah, i'm first time meeting him at 5x he's so nice yeah. Yeah. So nice and so like so such an extrovert. He's very very wholesome. Yeah, he's very humble. He's very <laughs> grounded. Yeah. And the thing that really works with us is there's a there's a, a sh- there's a shift in feminine and masculine energy. Both of us. Yeah, that's good. And it's always been like that. And that's what's really helped both of us heal and grow. 
Yeah. I think you guys are definitely like soul tied in that aspect then for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah well, I can. I, we have a pretty like, crazy story. Yeah. 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 No, you know that video of you surprising him in his bedroom on his birthday? Yeah. I remember. <laughs> he plays that every yeah, year. Yeah. I literally Wait, saw Wait, I want to see that. It's such a wholesome it's video. It's Jeffy and I surprising him on his Shall birthday we? with balloons. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wholesome because he would literally be like, "This makes me very happy." Yeah. Yeah. And then well, you know one thing about AK, which is super funny, like a lot of people will be like, kind of like. Like Jasmine, for example, right? She'll be like, "Oh, it's AK." Right? I'm like, so I, I I'm not used to seeing like uh, AK like that or Amarna right? yeah. like that like a lot. But the thing is, I just feel so comfortable around him. Yeah. And I literally yeah. went up to him like about DK Lee, and I started picking him up and did the same thing to me. He just comes grab me, just grab And he he's like that. No matter yeah. where we are, yeah. he will stop. We're at an airport. There's a family. We're in Mexico. There's a random banda there. We're yeah. in a. He's in a dispensary. There's a random little Gora kid that recognizes him. Like wherever we are, he will stop and make time for whoever it is because, and that's one thing I really respect about him, is that it doesn't matter what point he's at in his career. He's a person first yeah. and foremost. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. But that's like, ah oh man, like I it's so many good positive things to say about the guy. Yeah, man. no, I feel yeah. like yeah. We, like I mean we met at Five X as well, but like you know like say really sitting here getting to know you and then like some from like. AK like met him a little bit. Plus, I know he's a Virgo, so I, <laughs> I can see that you guys balance each other really well. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. We're going into astrology, guys. Is that what we're he's doing? He's the Earth Everybody sign. Everybody knows I love the astrology. Yeah. 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 Jasmine's astrology of the pod. He's Prem Joseph of the pod. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not even close. Oh. Jasmine Jyotish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Stop Wait, me. can we please hear the Prem Jyotish story though, like on the pod from Harpo? Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, good. I just, I was in Beverly Hills once and uh, I was in the Beverly Hills Hotel and uh, we were at like the open patio bar area and then went to the bathroom, came back and I was like, guys, that's Brim Jodish <laughs> sitting right there. I mean, he's, if he was in Beverly Hills, that's... He's doing his thing, He's bro. doing it. He's doing, he's doing it. it. He's doing it. Yeah. 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 Those, all those Sony TV ads worked out, man. Yeah. 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 All that income, income Saturdays worked out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. yeah. That's crazy. No, dude, it's so wild. This marketing is a whole different topic that we can oh probably get on to a different thing. <laughs> Don't yeah. even you're, you're, Obviously, you did 10 years of marketing, right? Yeah. I have a marketing company right now, too, so we do a lot of marketing, too, and it's like I never understood it, like on the desi aspect of it. I was <laughs> you like, know, quite recently I saw, like, there's a show uh, locally, like a singer, yeah. and their backdrop, I kid you not, the entire there was not one white space. It was filled with logos to the point where, like, my eyes couldn't handle it. Yeah. Logo and, soup, <laughs> and and I mean that's that's great, but at the same time, what are you getting from that? What mm -hmm. uh, what what's the recognition? What is the return? Yeah, how are my eyes gonna go to your logo versus the dude beside you? Yeah, yeah, that's what people don't yeah. understand. Like this, you like literally like bust up. They just like throw room. everything together. Like yeah. They just throw it yeah. together and just put it up. But then it's like for a lot of them, it works. Like, it does. We're like I don't, a, I don't, I don't know, know how. They, they see businesses are a lot of word of mouth. Tweets. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you guys like, think they about it. Know, like, what a TikTok yeah. Or yeah. Facebook ads. And then my parents would be like, is this real? And I'm like, no, please don't click on it. This is yeah. not <laughs> legit. Dude, I don't. I, okay. The amount of auntie and uncle that we could definitely like scam just by using oh proper God, Facebook marketplace. Like, like market. No, no, no. Listen, listen. This is. <laughs> But amount of people you could scam using market ads, like actual. Well, probably my pajada dad was scammed. He bought like a exactly. like a garden bed. I mean, he luckily he only paid two hundred bucks, which is yeah. still something. Yeah. But he was like, he's like, Bob, you weren't in town. I'm like, what is that supposed yeah. to mean? Like, send me the link, and yeah. then we yeah. like sent them an email, and it was some company in China, and it never came. So I yeah. was like, Dad, please never, never again. Yeah. Always run things by me, it's and so my parents will do that. They will like screenshot stuff, or they'll always and run send things it to by you. me. Yeah, which is good. But it's 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 unfortunate that a lot of people are taking like advantage of yeah. these yeah. vulnerable yeah. bajork people. Exactly, and that's what I'm trying to get to. It's like the amount of people that's that true. I could literally like on a on a. I know for a fact if I, if I was a scammer, which I'm not. If I if I did <laughs> it, sure? no, I promise. I promise you. I, if I did that, like, I know for a fact, like, yeah, like, I could probably convince a lot of people, like, oh, like, a has had like, yes, hey, special, four ninety nine, the like, like, or whatever, right? And yeah. people would probably get it, <laughs> whatever it might be, right? It's like, if you do that enough times, the FBI comes and finds your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the yeah. like an infinite money hack. Yeah, that or the RCMP. Well, yeah. Who's coming first? Obviously, literally. No, you're going to get caught within like the first like five minutes. Like, like, not or the Punjab like, police. Who's coming first? <laughs> Internet <laughs> police will come for you. Yeah, yeah, come for you. there it is. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm a, if I get exposed on an AK video, like, get, that's the I, end of me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the end of me. Yeah. No, but like the reason I bring it up is because like so many people get scammed on a daily basis on Facebook. Literally, my dad shows me, he's like, what the hot cheese ball? What the hot cheese log of the area? Mm -hmm. And like, it's like a market. It's even on marketplace. And I'll be like, guys, it wants like a, it's a f piece of furniture, like deposit first. Then yeah. come check it out. It's like, yeah. why am I doing that? Well, I think we have like obviously a different 
upbringing yeah. and understanding of it. Like yeah. I think our parents, like for the most most part, yeah. the community is like. Thank you for the parents, man. They're yeah. like village yeah. backgrounds, farming backgrounds. They're very backgrounds. trusting of people very quickly. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. So it's not yeah, so fully their fault. Depends, you know. My parents don't fuck with the internet. They still <laughs> think it's not credit card, Jody got learned. So they're just safe. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. A lot of like, a lot of like, uh, chachi that I know are like very, tr- like, poorly in that sense of. Yeah, bro. Like, like a lot of my chachi. Ch- uh, a lot yeah, of my chacha chacha is losing 10k a year. Average chacha Joe. Average chacha Joe is just going at it, going through it, man. Yeah. Well, we'll just get some last words from 5X marketing and director, right? Yeah. Exec- <laughs> executive director executive now. Director, yeah. Yeah, Our respect on her name. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, for context, we're a charity. Yeah. We are a full blown not non for profit, mm. and you know, I had so many people throughout the festival. They were like, "This needs to happen more often, Bob. Like, we want to come through and we want to make it happen." But charity. even though we are a charity and we are supported by um, government funders, which we're very, very, uh, you know, thankful for. As a BIPOC organization, our funding is cut down. We have to work our asses off to get sponsorships um, and people to support us. So, um, you know, you can you can donate to us directly. Yeah. Yeah. You can, if you're a business and you want to sponsor us, you can email us. Yeah. I mean, bavneed at 5xfest.com if anybody's <laughs> interested. Yeah. But there's so many ways, whether you want to volunteer, yeah. um, whether you're an up and coming artist and you're like, hey, I just want to, I just want to connect. I don't know where to start. There's so many ways that you can be involved in 5x, mm-hmm. but community support, we are driven by community. We do what we do for the community. Um, and really it's what the community that it, with your guys' support, we can continue to do this um, and we can blow this up. Yeah, no, it's it's really fun. You guys should definitely like 100% yeah. check it out next yeah. year. Hopefully they do it again this year. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's always, like I always say, like it's really hard to know what 5X is and like explain it until you actually come and experience now it. I know mm-hmm. what the name means, so I can explain that. Yeah. yeah. And so now, and the three of you have been now, right? Small and so you talk. know yeah. exactly what it's yeah. It's like very small talk. Hey, you know 5X? Do you know what that means? You know what the 5X means? Yeah. There is you. That's such a Gen Z term. Yeah, Riz is such a Gen Z term. It's yeah. just charisma. Yeah, yeah it's charisma. weird, I guess. Charisma. But people Chariz. use it more for glory. Oh, Riz, charisma. charisma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just have charisma. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm a millennial. I don't know these things. No, you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Young at heart. On the last day, last year of the millennial year. What would you guys both say for the younger version of yourself? You guys, one piece of advice, like quickly. I like that one, right? Because like everybody gives a unique answer, and it's nice to hear. It's interesting. I actually asked that question on my guest mm-hmm. for my guest too. It's such a good question. Yeah. Go first. You go first. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, Real. I would tell her, like I, I, I've rehearsed this many times, but I would just tell her that like she doesn't need to, like she's good enough on her own. Damn, you took mine. Um, because it's it's well, we've done that work, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I would tell her oh, that she's same. good enough and that she doesn't need to like, she doesn't need to look outside of herself for anything like yeah. like you don't need to look for people like you know you just you're good as you are yeah. who you are is good enough um and uh and that like the habits that you build and like the self-confidence that you build in that in that stage of your life i mean at 14 you don't know those things right but like a younger version of yourself yeah. i would just i would tell her that she's enough and i would say to her that like you're loved like i love you you know i think like when you're without your parents like look you're already like making a face um yeah yeah, i think we're not we're not told i love you often yeah as a bunch of people in general but a bunch of brown kids whose parents weren't around so i would just say to her like you're good enough and that i love you and uh yeah like you're so full of love and and also the last thing i would say to her is like you don't need to do anything to be loved because I always felt like I had to get attention to be loved or that I had to like do something for someone to be loved or I had to work really hard to be loved. But it's like who you are, like as you are, is inherently lovable and you're valuable just as you are. You don't have to go out and do anything or prove yourself to anybody. So it's a long winded answer because I was thinking about it as I was No, that was really sweet. That was really sweet. He gets it, all the Del to Del connection. (laughs) Me too. Del Del to Del connection. Yeah, Yeah, mine would definitely be very similar. Um, I would tell her she's powerful. She's powerful yeah. and she doesn't even know it. She's like, a bad bitch. There's, there, <laughs> 100% she is. I mean, it took for me to get into my 30s to really figure out my personal purpose, what I want to provide to others, and where I see my career. And I remember at 25 being like, I need to figure my shit out. I don't know who told me that or why, yeah. but you're almost there and everything happens in divine timing. 
Why you go to Everything. It doesn't matter how much you plan. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you think. It doesn't matter yeah. what the person beside you is doing, your Gwandi, whoever. Mm. It will happen for you when it's meant to. And mm. that's just yeah. something that really experienced with age, right? Mm. But you're good enough, you're powerful enough, you're loved, and you're the shit. Yeah. Like in a yeah. very humble, humble way, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. There's so many times where I doubted myself, whether it was with the partner that I chose in life, mm-hmm. whether it was a circle I was in, the community, the, the work that I was in. Mm-hmm. And somehow I just found the himmat in me to keep going. And yeah. right, if I had that version of me, which is really why we do what we do, yeah. whether it's the podcast, whether it's social media, whether it's 5X, it's to remind the community of that because it's, damn possible anything is possible and if there's enough people in your circle in your environment to remind you yeah yeah. go it's not a race it's a journey it's a journey and let the journey ride lock in Mm -hmm. that's the yeah that's some really good advice before we finally end off the pod this is the last final last thing yeah what do you guys think of the podcast (laughs) what do i think of the podcast well i have the like world's biggest soft spot for brown boys um i really do um i don't think that our world is set up in a way where we support brown men enough Mm. and we love them enough Mm -hmm. um we we don't create safety for them in a way that we do for women and yes i know sexism misogyny exists but i think it exists also it impacts men too and so um i do everything that i do for young brown boys because my brother is uh, 20 and he's basically my son and i want to like build a safer world for him um, and so when I see brown boys, I mean, Jasmine, I know you were added to the podcast after, <laughs> yeah. eventually, because you needed the I mean, the honestly, balance. according to them, I'm basically one of the boys. Yeah, so. <laughs> but I think when I see um, especially younger brown men doing, like, things that are positive, encouraging, uplifting, and creative, and, like, they're experiencing freedom, it just really, really warms my heart. Mm. So um, I, I don't listen to podcasts, so I don't listen to yours, but I follow you on Instagram, and I keep up with your TikTok content. And I, I just see you guys, and I've always been like, I'm so happy that they mm-hmm. that they're doing so this, That's and so that you guys are like, you know, you said these things a lot earlier, where you're like, a lot of a lot of brown boys wouldn't open themselves up to this conversation, yeah. or they wouldn't lean into this, and the fact that you you are when you're encouraged not to, is is groundbreaking, is radical. So I think that what you two are doing here, and then now including Jasmine and including a feminine energy into your space and inviting people like us because mm. this could have easily been a dude bro podcast where mm. all you do is talk about like you know like in your bubble, ego right? driven it don't bubble yeah. stuff yeah. preaching to the choir kind of stuff but um that's the thing. yeah that's, yeah it's a lot of people do that yeah. they'll just get on guests that align with like their bubble yeah like yeah. they'll agree yeah. with everything yeah or yeah. they're yeah. afraid to yeah. challenge them on yeah. things right yeah. like if they're being misogynistic or they're being homophobic, they're like not gonna say it. Yeah. So I would say that to the both of you is like you you have power. You have a microphone in front of you. You have power. Yeah. You can you can influence culture and generation. You're cultural producers. If you've chosen to make a podcast, you're a cultural producer. Yeah. And so like lean into that. And so that in that way, I would say like I I'm, I have so much love for for all of you. Yeah. Really. Thank you. Truthfully, um, my husband recorded with you guys I think last year. Yeah, last year, last year yeah. around this time. And. Um, that's how I heard about your podcast. And he came home and I said, how was it? And he said, it was really dope. He's done a lot of interviews, but he felt really comfortable Mm -hmm. and was just describing the energy. And he just felt like he was with his homies, Mm -hmm. you know? And so just from that, it left a really good spot in my heart. And just meeting you guys, I think it was nice that I got to actually meet you in person. Mm -hmm. Like I know we chatted about doing the podcast prior to, and it didn't work out and I think it, it, again, divine timing, right? Yeah. It was meant to be afterwards, but it's nice because I feel like it gives it more context for you guys to have seen us do our thing, to yeah. be a part of 5X, yeah. Um, yeah. and to see the conversations that you're having. Like I see that the, the conversations that you're having with men and with women in, in the industry, and you're all very comfortable with yourselves. And it makes yeah. the people that are on the other side feel very comfortable being vulnerable with you and being open yeah. with you. And just like Harpo yeah. said, there's not enough of that. And so, I hope that you guys continue to do this because you're changing lives by doing it. Yeah, and I, I would also like to say that like the dynamic between the three of you, um, my friend Asa the Convict and I talk about this often, how in our culture, in our community, we're not taught how to be friends with like yeah. the opposite gender. Yeah. And so like men hang out with men and women hang out with women, but like the you coming together and like just like seeing you be this friendly, like I don't have like a close guy friend in my life. Mm-hmm. Like it just doesn't exist, you know? Yeah. 
And so to see this dynamic is also really like unique. And so that yeah. that's a, like a nice element too. Yeah. yeah, I think that you, I think well, actually, I I think you guys probably heard about it more than I did, but I did get feedback about it as well. That like it's so sick that they bought brought on a female presence. Shout yeah. out to Gurdwar Camp, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brought them together. Yeah. 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 Yeah.